Today I wanted to take a couple of seconds to just run through a, uh, a wiring technique that I use, which um, I think is a little bit forgotten these days, and that's called wire wrap. Wire wrap was something that predated, um, was used extensively in the past, um, and is quite easy to do. So when you don't want to prototype a full board or get a, uh, you know, get a circuit board created, um, and point to point can be a little bit of a hassle with soldering. Wire wrap's an alternative. So what you have is this very fine wire, and I'll have to look up and post what the dimensions of it is, but this is wire wrap wire. And if you strip one end of it, then you have a tool, this little wire wrap tool. It looks a little bit like uh, one of those, you know, eyeglass screwdrivers. But on the end there's a hole, and there's a little teeny channel, and you put the wire wrap wire down that channel, then there's a very small hole, and I don't know if it can be focused on, that you put, so you have these little these little sockets that have long square legs on them. You put that into the hole, and if you twirl that, you now get a very strong and very capable connection there without having to solder and it can be undone very quickly too with the with the wire wrap tool there you go it's a very nice uh, easy way to make connections what I would call maybe one step up from using a breadboard uh, and that's what I'm going to do today I have this um, NRF radio and I've got it integrated with a, a Duella Minova Arduino and I just wanted to build this up as a bit of a kit uh, so that I could test it out with my DigiX. Now I've got a Lady Ada uh, Proto Shield, which I got many years ago. Now to get the extra clearance for the wire wrap, I've got this extension thing, which I, I can't remember what I got that for another kit sometime. But that gives me enough clearance once that's assembled that we don't have any problem with the wire wrap, the little legs for the wire wrap thing. So there we go. So what I've got is these connectors that has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16 connections. We've got this as 8. So what I'm essentially going to do, 16, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. This has 20. So this little guy has 20. What I'm going to do is create a wire wrap socket in here. So we just take two of these little long leggedy things, put those in there, then that can plug into here. Then what I'm going to do is connect these pins on the NRF radio over to the other side here so they can be pulled out and then I can use just regular wiring to go over to the Arduino pins. So what you need to do is solder these guys in place. Sorry, just sort of on and off with my glasses, just to really hold them in place. So there's a bit of soldering to do. So what I'm going to do is just use the socket here as a bit of a fixture to hold everything in place. Get that pressed in there reasonably well so there's a good solid connection. There we go. So now all it needs doing is just to put a few dabs of solder onto these legs. So we just need to solder these little guys in place and we just need a small dab. So that's one of the advantages of this technique is that you can desolder these components pretty easily if you want to reuse the board for something else. But it's a bit more permanent than for instance doing a, uh, a breadboard. Just got to remelt that little dab of solder there. And this one is okay. 
So now, put that aside. So that's now in there pretty solidly. Those aren't going to move around anywhere. And we can start to plan our, our attack for doing the wire wrapping. So as usual with these kinds of things, the problem is having to look at stuff upside down. So we're going to put the NRF radio in these ones, in that position. Pin number one, which we want to pull out. We want to pull the pins sort of out to here. And then what we can do is to use regular wires just to connect them up this way. So we want to have pin number one, and this is where I get a little lost sometimes. Pin number one is going to be this pin right here. So that's going to be our first one. And according to my little diagram, pin number one has to go to ground. But we're going to, what we're doing is we're trying to pull that out over to here. So we're essentially sort of moving these pins from the NRF over to this bank over here so that then they're a little easier to manipulate. So let's get some wire wrap wire going here. So we leave a fairly good margin. Take our wire wrap tool, goes into the tiny little channel there. Like that. Find our pin number one again, which is this one. Run it down, give it a good spin, and there that's permanently connected now. So we take the other end. So now we have our NRF radio here. 
coming down to these legs on the wire wrap and then they're pulled over to here so that now we can very easily say okay this one here is pin one which is ground so we go to here which is pin one pin one and we'll just take a black wire just so we can know that that's pin one I'll just double check again because I always get mixed up that's it there that's pin one and then with these um, Adafruit things we can pull that over to one of the grounds here I think I can just shorten that wire down a little bit we don't need that much pop that right in there now there's a capacitor on the NRF radio which I found I needed to eliminate noise from the from the power supply so if you go on the NRF wiki page you'll find that they often recommend you have to put a, a capacitor across the the uh, ground and the power and I'll uh, I'll double check what the capacity is in this capacitor and put it up in the uh, in the blog post with this with this video and then we know that the next one here is this one so that goes over to 5 volts like that and now we'll just pause for a second